Comic-Cons Written by Keith and Sarah Cordemartin Welcome to Comic-Con. Packed with thousands of other fans in an auditorium, you wait for the stars to arrive. It's warm inside your Chewbacca costume, and you're impatient. Suddenly, the audience is on his feet, cheering. You jump up to see Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr., walk out on stage. The Avengers panel has begun. This is the world of Comic-Cons, colorful, crowded, and built for fans of pop culture. If you collect comic books, watch movies, or play video games, there's something for you at Comic-Con. These fan conventions, called cons for short, happen all over the country. Origin Story Shel Dorf, a comic book artist, was one of the first people to start comic book conventions. Dorf organized all smart, small gatherings of comic fans in Detroit in the 1960s. He went on to found the convention now known as Comic-Con International, CCI, San Diego, in 1970. The first San Diego convention attracted about 100 fans. It now hosts over 130,000 people every year. Hundreds of other Comic-Cons have sprung up across the country. There are large Comic-Cons in New York, Seattle, Denver, and Phoenix every year, to name a few. Tickets for these events sell out months in advance. Some fans camp at ticket booths for days to be sure they get in. The Rise of an Art Form What has caused this explosive growth? First, comic books have become more popular in recent years. Comic books have had many readers during the Golden Age of the 1930s and 40s. They became much less popular for several decades afterward. During that time, many people thought of comics as kid stuff, but in the late 1980s and early 1990s, comic book series such as The Sandman and Watchmen broke new ground and were praised by critics as serious works of art. Since then, interest in comic books has soared, and writers and artists continue to explore new topics and styles. A modern comic might tell a traditional superhero story, a story about war, or a story about family drama. Comic books known as graphic novels are popular with young adults. Graphic memoirs, another kind of comic book, often deal with serious themes. For example, Art Spiegelman won a Pulitzer Prize, a highly respected achievement, for his graphic memoir, Mouse. His work was based on interviews with his father, a Holocaust survivor. As topics for comic books have expanded, so have the audiences. Fans of every color, age, and gender can find something to relate to in comic books. As a result, Comic-Cons are booming. Second, the enormous success of recent Hollywood movies based in comic books has brought many people to Comic-Cons. Movies such as Iron Man, The Dark Knight, and Guardians of the Galaxy attracted many new fans. Movies are now a big part of Comic-Cons. Famous actors, writers, and directors from comic book movies often appear on panels and draw huge crowds. Movies are only the beginning, though. Comic-Cons around the world also celebrate video games, novels, and television shows. The audience has become so large that some cons focus on just one art form. For example, many fans attend cons for anime and manga, animated films and comic books from Japan. There are cons for fans and collectors of classic comics. There are cons for fans of sci-fi and fantasy fiction. There are even cons for fans of steampunk, horror, and humor, among many others. Big cons and small. Comic cons happen in cities all over the country, too. Outside the huge conventions in San Diego and New York, the crowds are smaller but just as enthusiastic. Check online or in your local newspaper to find if there's a comic con coming to your town near you. You might be surprised at what you'll find. Local fans mix big name cartoonists and movie stars at many smaller cons. If you go, you might just see the star of your favorite show or your favorite writer. You are also likely to meet local artists and make new friends. Cosplay Many fans display their own creativity at Comic-Cons. Some do this through cosplay. In cosplay, fans dress up in costumes as characters from comic books, anime, manga, and other fantasy genres. Cosplay is serious business for fans worldwide. Costumes can be bought, custom-built, or handmade. Many cosplayers make realistic props that go with their characters. Some cosplayers act like their favorite characters while they are in costume. 
Costumes can be simple or incredibly detailed. Figuring out how to make or build a costume is a big part of the fun for many fans. Cosplay is a major part of Comic-Cons with hundreds of costumes fans in the audience. Many conventions also hold cosplay contests where cosplayers can pose for photos and act in skits based on their characters. Celebrity Appearances At Comic-Cons, fans can also meet creators personally. Stars often take part in panels where they speak about the experience of making comic books, films, and shows. Audience members can sometimes ask questions during panicle panels, have their photos taken with art celebrities, and get autographs. These personal meetings become treasured memories for many fans. The Exhibit Hall The center of most Comic-Cons is the Exhibit Hall. Fans can buy and trade comic books here, along with action figures, toys, and other merchandise. Experienced collectors can find rare editions of comic books. New collectors can get a head start on their collections. There is often an author signing in the area in the exhibit hall where fans can meet artists and writers. Even if you're not looking to buy anything, there's always a lot to see in the exhibit hall. Cosplayers wander by in colorful costumes, movies and movie trailers are shown regularly, Celebrity sightings are always possible, and there is an endless, endless supply of colorful merchandise to browse through. Growing Pains and Issues The popularity of Comic-Cons has not come without some controversy, though. Some comic book fans feel that bigger cons have become too large. They think that the focus has moved away from comic books. Many Comic-Cons would in fact be described as pop culture conventions rather than comic book conventions. The audience for comic books and comic cons has changed as well. While comic con attendees used to be mostly male, about 40% of recent CCI San Diego attendees are female. More than half of the people attending recent cons are under 29. The increased diversity of the comic con audience brings larger crowds and is a welcome development for most fans. Comic cons can also be a place to discuss larger controversies. With the recent comeback of the comic book form, authors have taken on serious topics like race, gender, politics, and war. These comics are not to everyone's liking. Some comics can even become the subjects of banned books campaigns, where a library is asked to take the book off the shelves. Spider-Man and Batman comics, for example, have been challenged in some places because of adult themes. Readers, teachers, and librarians often discuss censorship on panels at Comic-Cons. One result of these talks has been the rise of the labels graphic novel and graphic memoir to describe comics that are meant for adults. Some comics are still aimed at children, but comics as a whole are no longer kids only. Some comics are fictional and some aren't. Some are educational and some are meant for entertainment. Some deal with adult themes, while others can provide an escape into fantasy worlds. Since comics are diverse, should all comics be shelved together in libraries and schools? What, do, what role do comics have in our society? These questions are frequent topics at Comic-Con panels. Pushing the boundaries. Keeping up with the variety of comic books can be challenging, but overall, it's an exciting time for Comic-Cons. The huge range of the comics available today has resulted in bigger and wider audiences for comics and conventions. Fans of every age, color, and gender can find themselves represented in a comic somewhere. Heroes might look like a Superman, a girl from Botswana, or a reporter on the ground in Bosnia. There is no limit to what can happen in a comic book or who can be its heroes. In the end, this is what, people, this is what draws people to Comic-Cons. The cons, and the series that inspire them, create worlds where ordinary people can be transformed into heroes. Many people return to that experience over and over. The end.